Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time, definitely stay tuned for this one. Um, we had a person that asked a question on one of the videos on starting the security company. And if it's financially worth it, um, if they make, if we make good enough money, whatever the case may be. So I'm gonna do a little bit more extensive, um, I guess, answers to that question. Kind of break things down a bit because just replying back with yes or no, or it could be, it depends. I don't think is good enough. Um, so I want to make this video. Hopefully this answers your question, whoever didn't um, ask it. And also for anyone that's future looking to start a security company or wanting to, um, hopefully this helps guide them on the what is, what ifs, and so forth. And we'll get into that, guys, right after this. <laughs> guys so um, starting a company is it financially worth it is it going to pay off um, are you gonna be rich you know are you gonna make a lot of money whatever the case may be I will kind of break this down especially for anyone that has not been in the security industry who wants to get into it um, and they're just not sure because I haven't really worked it or ran on business or anything of that nature before so to get to that question and answer it, um, you know, I, eventually I'll get there, so stick with me on this, guys. Um, so when you start up your business, obviously any business that you start up is going to have any, a certain amount of overhead cost. And you can go on the cheaper side, go on the more expensive side, depending on your finances, your loans, whatever the case may be, whatever you do have saved up or whatever loan you get. Um, First and foremost, you should try to get a minimum and try to go a little bit above it. Secondly, um, you got to add that into your finances, right? Your startup costs, eventually you need to get paid back for that, especially if you're like me and took out personal loans or things of that nature to do this, right? Um, am I rich from doing this? No. Um, do I get a check from doing this? Yes. Does a McDonald's worker make more than I do currently at a full-time or overtime position? Yes. Will that be forever? No, it won't. So your determination of financial worth on doing this, it can be very worth it. Um, you can make a lot of money doing this if you have multiple contracts. So right now, currently, we have a couple contracts and a couple employees, a few employees. Um, we're not big. We're, we just started out about two years ago. And, you know, this is our second year of operating. And I'll tell you, honestly, guys, it is extremely hard for some people and easy for others to get contracts. Um, I haven't found that sweet spot on bidding, I guess, and pricing, even though, you know, like I try to go on the lower end of things, but I don't want to go too low because then they don't take you serious, but you don't want to go too high because then you get out competed. But to be honest with you guys, I've found that businesses and companies don't even look at that anymore. They, they want the cheapest cost to say that we're not legally responsible. If something happens, we had security. At least we did our part and hired somebody to help protect you while living in your apartment or while shopping at our shopping center or whatever the case may be. Um, that's mainly why people hire security is what I come to find. It's no longer like it used to be when I was working where it was for security, for protection, for just in case, you know, something happens, I want you guys there to end a threat or deal with a issue or whatever the case is. It's becoming more of a um, legal scapegoat for civilian or civil law litigation issues, lawsuits, things of that nature. That's basically what our 
industry has come to and I think a lot of that was from the corporate design um, when you're a big company as I made in another video you can have a hundred contracts and as long as you have your overhead costs and you're making money you can start even at 20 contracts later you can start lower bidding jobs to get it because the money you're getting from those other ones and this one that you just low bidded lower than the other companies are like smaller private companies like us um, you can afford to still pay a guy and get a car and lights and decals whatever is required for that position in that specific place so you can do that and still make your money back and have guys work while you are collecting a check every month right and that's everyone's dream that's my dream even though I would still come out to the field I would still show up because to do security guys you have to have a passion to help others you have to have a will to want to be there in case someone is having the worst day possible um, you're there to help them through that and to protect them from anything bad that's going on so that's the first thing to get into security you have to have that um, now I'm not saying you can't just come in like a business guy and not have that passion you can you can be successful in doing that um, by all means, you know, do it. But it helps have that passion for what we're doing. Um, like I said, we only have a few contracts, so I'm making a small check from this, guys. It's not much. It's not enough to pay my bills by itself. So as some of you guys know, I do auto glass replacements as well during the day, security at night, and run and operate things. So I'm literally working pretty much two full-time jobs to not just support my family, my bills, and my life, but to support my security company. Um, you know, the, the first patrol car we got, that was something that I paid for, right? The company didn't pay for that. Uh, uniforms, same thing. Um, everything from vests to mics to firearms that if I upgraded or whatever the case was, is all from my own personal money. And still to this day, sometimes I have to pay my personal money out and then wait for some checks to come in or some extra cash to come in from working the few sites we do have to get that money back. Now, once we get two, two to three more contracts, so around, you wanna be around five to 10 contracts, right? Um, that's when you start really noticing that you're able to I guess financially support yourself your business and it'd be starting to become at least profitable for the most part um, but if you're just jumping in don't expect that to be in the first year you know make a five-year goal to get three four contracts if you can it takes time it takes a lot of work a lot of effort a lot of loss of sleep and a lot of people's problems that you have to deal with as your problem in the meantime and then you got to unwind and do it all over again um, heck when we first started uh, these two contracts that I'm on currently right now making this video I was working five to six days a week on top of a full-time job of doing glass until we could hire someone train somebody figure out the pay figure out the expense the gas cost the insurance cost the cell phone the site required um we have business insurance we have reporting software payments <laughs> so you you see what i'm saying you have to really factor in all that in your area too that you're doing this and kind of get quotes shop around get your your minimum and where you want to be that's going to get you your first contract price and do not forget especially on your first contract because I made that mistake I did not factor in well what if there's overtime so what if it's you know 10 minutes before midnight and we get a we get a call on our phone or we get a message on our phone I need your assistance at this apartment there's a domestic issue now you or your guy is staying there an extra hour or more depending on where you're at police time um, your time of kind of settling the situation down and getting it under control 
and then reporting that situation. So all that adds up into time of people's pay and then it becomes overtime pay um, because you're over 40 hours or, or your guy's over 40 hours. So please factor in at least five, 10 hours overtime for just in case something happens. This is really important, guys. Um, apart from that, once you got all those numbers, the minimum, a little bit of cushion room, as you get, God willing, um, at least in our case, you know, God willing, we get a few more contracts at a price we can afford to pay somebody and then have some money come back to the business. Um, and then vehicle expense, maintenance costs, things of that nature. So we can put that aside. Um, if we can get another contract, you know, one or three more, we would be at that margin where we can actually start growing our business in more counties in our state. Um, currently I'm trying to find contracts in a smaller town where I just moved to, um, which is over in Citrus County. And um, I actually got another channel called Exploring the Surface. So if you want to take a look and see kind of where I'm at, it's a small town area, kind of farming area. Um, that's our private channel where you get to see me outside of work. And um, just started it up recently, just started making videos. But nonetheless, that area is really difficult to get jobs because it's a small community. So think about your geological location as well. Are you in a big city? Are you close by? What is the crime rate? What is the constant things you're seeing? And is it worth going to that location? Um, I have a guy I talked to who works up North Florida and there's gun violence daily, dead bodies all the time. And it becomes a, to a point where if law enforcement isn't backing you up and you're not backing them up and you're not on the same page, no amount of money is going to be worth people's lives, your guys' lives, your life. Um, eventually, criminals will kill each other off to the point where it can be under control. And then you want to step in to help finish clearing it up. But if you're in a war zone, guys, in a city that's bad, full of gangs, um, you know, think about those things too. Because you're going to end up spending more money as you're replacing vehicles for bullets, going through your vehicles, damaging your your tires, tires being slashed, people hitting your vehicles with bats. I mean, if you can see around the world right now, there's one thing in common between law enforcement and security is people don't like rules, they don't like being told what to do, and people are angry, uh, naturally, especially with everything going on in the world. And they're gonna take it out on you, your vehicles, so be prepared for stuff like that too. Thank God we've never had that issue. Um, but then again, we're not in a gang territory at this point, um, or at least not anymore. Uh, when we first started, we had no choice but to get into a little bit of a bad area and we cleaned up our area pretty well, as, long, as well as the police doing their job, which really made a big difference as well. And for the most part, it's quiet. You know, it went from bullet holes spraying across our buildings to um, random domestic violent issues or domestic issues that turn into deadly issues, which is very common even in the suburbs. So keep that in mind guys when you're doing that. Um, but to get down to it, the question to answer the question that I was asked if it's financially worth doing this thing is pretty simple. It is long term worth it, yes. But define long term and set your expectations to where you want a realistic ideal in a very competitive market. If you set your expectations for five years, you're going to have disappointments along the way, yes. It's going to be a struggle for those five years, yes. And it could take seven years. But if I told you you could sit back in an office or at your home at a desk and have a dispatcher run things, have officers run things, and you're you're just focused on payroll weekly or bi-weekly, you know what I mean, and the normal small things. You're not actually working these sites, you know, or anything of that nature. You got FTOs, you got, um, 
you know, field supervisors that are checking on your guys and you're finally established and you're just sitting back and you're collecting six, eight grand a month, by all means, yes, it is worth it a hundred percent. But to finally get to that point, guys, it's a struggle, a really big struggle. And, and, and I don't think a lot of guys are prepared for that. So mentally prepare yourself for that struggle. Physically prepare yourself for that struggle. Um, constantly learn, constantly train, and you guys will do great doing this business. And you know, even get to the point where you might merge your company with another company and help each other grow and take the good things from one company to the other company and vice versa to the point where you're one organization and you know, don't just throw away jobs because you can't get to that other county. Make a community, help each other out. Hey, if you get this contract, do you think you could throw, you know, some money towards us, you know, for a finder's fee? Or if you get a contract in my county and you throw us that contract and we bid it and get it, um, we'll throw you a finder's fee or we'll pay you X amount of dollars a month or whatever the case is let's help each other out so that we can all grow together. And whether you merge your businesses or you don't, having that communication even, you know, between companies and radio chatter and all that really lets you know what's going on in the next county over, the next city over, um, and what could possibly come into your area eventually. So that it's not just for information, but it's for support and helping small business owners like us help each other grow and not be feeling like we're against each other um, bidding on jobs and things of that nature. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope I answered the question that was asked if it's worth it. And as I said, it is. Just as long as you have that expectation set in your mind and in your heart. And, you know, if you're like me, Give your plans to God and let God work with you. Um, you know, like I said, I'm not happy how fast our business has grown, but I have faith that eventually we will get to that point. And, you know, sometimes it takes five years, sometimes it takes 10 years, but if I can sit back 10 years from now and be 43 years old or 42 years old and collect a check and just do minor things and help guys out and support um, our officers in the field, our FTOs, our dispatchers, and all that stuff, and still collect a check and have more time for my family, I mean, you can't put a price on that time. And seven years, ten years is worth it to me for a chance to be that, to get to that point. And that's, that's the real, in my opinion, the real American dream there is to get to that point where you know, you can work from home and be with family more, go to church more, whatever the case may be, guys. And that, no matter how much hell you go through, is worth it. So, yes, definitely open up your security company. Follow, subscribe if you have any more questions. You want me to make videos on other topics, let me know in the comments. Hey, can you make a video on this and your thoughts or whatever the case is. And if this video was helpful for any of you guys at all, even people that own businesses that have just started out that are discouraged in any way, um, please give a thumbs up and a comment. And we really appreciate your feedback, guys. And until next time, guys, be safe. God bless and take care.